Salutations friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another fragrance first impressions and it's going to be on the fragrance from Gallagher Fragrances Evergreen Dream. I'm really excited for this one. So if you guys like to know what I think about this fragrance and how it performs and projects and all the goodies that I talk about in my first impressions video, then keep watching. As always guys, I will remind you about how my first impressions videos work. I have a fragrance I have never tried on my skin before. Sometimes I've smelled it on other people or on test strips in the store. It's never touched my skin. And I will give you my first impressions. The first thing I'll do is spritz it on my uh, myself, usually my wrists, and I'll give you my first impressions on its opening. Then I come back in about 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes longer if I think it needs more time to dry down, and I will give you my first impressions of the dry down. Now I know that all fragrances need at least one to two wears to really give a really good first impressions on its longevity's projection and how it develops on the skin. So what I will do is wear through the sample throughout the week and come back during next week's first impressions video and at the end of that video, let you guys know what I think about this fragrance, kind of like a little mini review. Which means at the end of this video, I'm going to give you my little mini review of last week's fragrance, which was from Deutip, and it was Le Ombre Dans Lou. That being said, let's get into the impressions. Now, I had um, Gallagher Fragrances had a vault sale, so I got a few of their Silk Series fragrances. I was really excited to try Tina from the Critical Virgo. Had a few samples, and I tried them from her, and I fell in love, so I got some of them. And I had been interested in Evergreen Dream because there's something about the notes in this fragrance that really speak to me. Uh, so um, he was very generous and sent me a sample of this, so I have not tried it, not smelled it on anybody else. I have seen reviews of it around, but I decided to not go too much into other people's reviews because I wanted to do a first impressions on this, so I've been trying to like not um, bias myself by listening to other people's reviews. So let's tar tart. Let's start with the notes. This is a shared unisex fragrance released in 2017. Uh, the top notes are lime, grapefruit, and galptinum. Uh, the middle notes are birch, tar, cashmere, Russian lavender, and pine resin. I'm really excited for this pine. Uh, the base notes are coumarin, musk, oak musk, patchouli, and cedarwood. So this is supposed to be a very herbal, aromatic green I can never pronounce that word correctly, type of fragrance. See, a lot of people have been comparing this to the um, the Tom Ford fragrances. Um, you know the ones. I can't, I can't remember the green series with the incense and the vert and things like that. Um, those are really beautiful fragrances. I don't have a lot of experience with those fragrances, so I'm not going to be able to tell you if they remind me of them or not. But I do really like woodsy fragrances. I love oak moss. I like bitter green fragrances. And I love the smell of pine. Pine is one of my favorite. If, like, I have candles in my house, it's usually rose or pine. <laughs> Uh, there's just something about the smell of pine that I just really latch onto and love. So I've been looking for a really good pine fragrance, so we'll see if this fits the bell. So let's get into the review. First things first, I will spritz it on my skin, usually again on my wrists, and let you guys know what I think. Now I haven't spritzed this, I kind of, when I got these samples, I, he sent me a few other ones as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to spritz this. But I was like, no, I have to wait because I'm doing first impressions. So, um, let you guys know about what I think. Originally in the opening, it's pretty much exactly what I thought it would be. I'm getting the lavender, it's very aromatic. There's something about it that's kind of a little bit animalic and musky, but you're getting a really deep green note. Like if you were to see the greenest leaf, the deepest greenest leaf, and imagine what that would smell like, that's what this smells like. It's a little bit bitter, it's a little bit green, there's a little bit of, again, animalic musky notes in the background, but overall it's really, really good. Fragrances like this I think really need to dry down on my skin, so I'm gonna give this about an hour. I'm gonna give it an hour uh, to really develop on my skin, to open up on my skin, because usually with um, like more resinous fragrances or more green fragrances or things like this, I really want to give it enough time to kind of co-mingle with my um, my body. 
sounds kind of weird, but I will be back in about an hour and we'll let you know what I think. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been just over an hour. I've just been doing stuff on my computer and I have, I think this has developed enough on my skin for me to let you guys know kind of how it's feeling. First things first is that the kind of anomalic musky note in the beginning kind of turned a little bit more resinous um, and became a little bit deeper um, and has really been pairing nicely with the lavender notes and the oak mountain notes and the patchouli. Now I don't get much cedar wood in this and I'm kind of happy for that. I do get a lot of pine. I am getting a lot of patchouli and oak moss and I'm still getting kind of like the crispness of the grapefruit and the lime zest in here. So the Christmas is really pairing nicely with the resin and pairing nicely with the musk and the patchouli and it's making this smell. There's something about this that kind of smells like rugged, <laughs> which when you see the notes you kind of expect that to kind of smell like that. But the green here in this, it smells green. It smells moist and wet and musky and amolic and resinous but green like a, again like that green leaf like it's just you plucked it from a forest and you're just smelling it like a crazy person just putting it up to your nose and smelling it that's what this is smelling it's very aromatic um but it's also kind of like not crazy loud i've actually noticed that it's not really projecting too much. Like my husband came in and usually if I'm ever trying something new, I go up to him and I'm like, smell this. And he always looks at me like with the saddest face, like, why do you do this to me? Um, and so I went up to him and he just kind of was like, eh. you know, he didn't really smell it until it was really close. So I'm not sure if it needs a little bit of time to project or if it's one of those fragrances that sits closer to the skin. Definitely gonna have to wear this a bit more to see how it goes. But in relation to uh, like how I feel about it, how it smells, this smells exactly like what I would hope it would smell like. When I see notes like this together, when I see like resins and crisp citruses like lime and grapefruit and not like the sweeter, juicier, creamier citruses like bergamot, a mandarin or orange or even in some cases lemon, um, I kind of want everything to be crisp. You want things to be a little bit bitter. You want things to be a little bit acidic, a little bit resinous and green. When I see oak moss, I really want to smell the oak moss. And when I saw pine and patchouli and the lavender, I was really hoping that this would be a very aromatic green fragrance. And definitely I'm getting that beautiful, rich, green fragrance from this. It's really, really nice. Um, I would say that this is marketed as a shared unisex fragrance, but this smells like something that would be marketed as a masculine fragrance. And I think that that's really, really nice because in a lot of cases, when you get those unisex fragrances that are on the green side, sometimes they can be a little bit too woodsy. Sometimes they can be a little bit too sweet. And I like the fact that this is a little bit more bitter. I like the fact that this is a little bit more resinous. I like the fact that this is a little bit more green and not so kind of like sweet wood. It's more of just kind of like a deep green experience, which is really, really nice. And I think the name is really clever too. I think Evergreen Dream, if you think of evergreen trees and things like that, this kind of smells like that. This is what I would think that would smell like. And so conceptual wise, it's a fantastic fragrance. I was really excited to wear this and this is exactly how I hoped it would smell. So it's a fantastic fragrance. Um, but I definitely want to wear it uh, throughout the week to see how it performs and projects and develops on my skin because sometimes like this, like after a few hours, it completely changes. So next week will be an interesting thing to let you guys know how this works on my skin and how it developed and projected and its longevity. But so far it's pretty good. I'm really loving it and it would definitely be full body worth, full bottle worthy at this point. All right, so let me tell you guys about last week's fragrance. It was from Diptyque and it was L'Ombre d'Anne's Lou and it was the Eau de Parfum formulation. Now, what I really liked about that fragrance was the nice juxtaposition between the kind of aromatic herbaly rose and the ambergris and just everything about that fragrance smelled like a green, uh, just beautiful rose, just really, really stunning rose. Um, and then you had the Christmas with the black currant leaves, and then as you wore it longer on your skin, you got a little bit more of the jamminess from the black currant. Overall, that fragrance is absolute perfection. 
And I have to say that all the hype around that fragrance and all of the love around that fragrance is definitely well deserved. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. The only thing I didn't like about it was as the longer I wore it, it did tend to get a little bit more on the jammy side, and I really love that opening, guys. That opening was unreal. So I actually want to pick up a bottle of it, but I want to try the Eau de Toilette. I'm hoping maybe the Eau de Toilette would maybe be a little bit more on the crisper side and maybe would have more of that opening, that beautiful opening, than the Eau de Parfum. So I'm going to sample the Eau de Toilette, but I am going to be getting a bottle of that. It is beautiful. But if the Eau de Toilette is the same as the Eau de Parfum, it wouldn't matter to me. It's definitely full body worthy, full bottle worthy. Absolutely stunning. It had really nice longevity on my skin. I got about six to eight hours. The opening, the part that I loved the most, lasted for about an hour. Um, and it had decent projection. It wasn't crazy loud. It wasn't crazy like filling a room, but it had a nice scent cloud around it. it would definitely, if people liked that fragrance, um, they would be able to appreciate it and enjoy it with you. So overall, that fragrance is gorgeous, definitely full body bottle worthy. We'll be buying a bottle of it, but I do want to see how the Eau de Toilette and see if maybe it doesn't get as jammy or sweet closer to the end if maybe you get a little bit more of the crispness in the opening that I really liked. Uh, but overall, I really, really enjoyed it and definitely recommend it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, guys, if you like my fragrance reviews, my first impression first impression videos or anything like this, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also, don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time. Bye!